what do you think of Rugby Wrap-Up? Nice. Coming up next on Rugby Wrap-Up, a star player for the world's highest ranked sevens team. Rugby Wrap-Up brought to you in part by Irish Rugby Tours, The Balanced Palette, Nutrition for Peak Performance, Afia Sports Training Group, and The Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy at the Fantasy Sports Network, Studio 34 in New York City, talking rugby. And we always like to talk rugby around the holidays and wish you a happy holiday season. And what we have under the tree for you is a treat. We have one of the best players on the best sevens team on the planet. And I had a chance to speak with that player at the Pig & Whistle, the world's best rugby pub. Check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. We are at our satellite studio, the Pig & Whistle on West 36th Street in New York City, the world's best rugby pub. And it's apropos because we have one of the world's best rugby players on with us, Mr. Stephen Thomason of the HSBC 7 Series Table Leading Eagles. Stephen, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the warm welcome. I don't know if I've gotten an introduction like that before. If you stay on top and you win, this is what happens. We kiss your kids a little bit. (laughs) I can get used to it, that's for sure. Steve, I know that you're in a rush. Your time is precious. First question up, from your head coach, Mike Friday. He says, how do you cope with being shorter than he is? Oh, man. (laughs) Of course you would say something like that. Uh, it's tough. It's a tough thing to cope with. Um, you know, I look at him sometimes for uh, motivation and, and see how much more I can grow. But uh, no, it's been the running joke with the team for a while. And uh, I mean, if I can be a punching bag for the team and leave a little bit of stress, I'll do it. <laughs> All right. Silliness aside, do you know what number 496 means? That's my eagle number. That's my 15's cap number. Good stuff. You know that. I like that. Good job. You're a California kid. You started playing rugby because your cousins play? Yep. So my uncle played um, during the 70s and 80s in college and then into men's club. And then uh, I grew up in the same hometown as as them. And so my uncle is the one that got uh, them into it. And then kind of me as I followed. Which men's club did your uncle play for? Uh, Santa Rosa, Santa Rosa Rugby Men's Club up in uh, Santa Rosa, California, north of San Francisco. But you're a a baseball player and an American football player. What positions did you play in both of those? I played uh, running back and safety in in football, and then I played catcher in third base in baseball. The hot corner and the tools of ignorance. Yeah, very much so. A little mix of both. I'll tell you what, if any positions in baseball are going to transition well into rugby, Physically challenging positions, arguably catcher at third base. Hot corner, you got to make decisions in a split second, get in front of the ball. Catcher, you just, you know, you're getting destroyed the whole game. Yeah, I mean, I've always been kind of a fast switch, uh, fast switch athlete. So those, those kind of fast switch positions like those have always favored me growing up. Fast twitch athlete, the term of the day. <laughs> Uh, not long distance, that's for sure. Hey, the longest you got to go is 100 meters, right? Exactly, exactly. And even that's a bit too far. All right, tough question for you. As a rugby teammate and a rugby fan, which was more exciting for you to watch? Perry Baker with that try against Fiji going east, west, north, south. Danny Barrett barreling over the New Zealand uh, All Black Sevens players just down in Cape Town. Or Ben Pinkelman's pass. To Danny Barrett. So I so I've got a bit of an interesting take on on these two because in Vegas I was in the I was in the stands watching because I was injured. So I got to see Perry's try from the stands. What was nice about Danny's is I was kind of, I got front row seat. I was the one chasing right behind him. So I got to see that about as close as anyone uh, live. So oh man, that's a tough one to choose. Ben Ben's pass to set him up, I think is pretty underrated. I don't think a lot of people have really given him much credit for that, but I probably got to go with Danny's just because I was right behind him and, and got to see that in full fight and feel the crowd's reaction. But I mean, Perry's try last year against BG in Las Vegas was, uh, I mean, arguably the greatest try ever. So 
favorites though. They're both they both are pretty good, but I'd probably I'd probably give the nod to Danny since I kind of got to see that one from a much better angle. Well, I'm certainly not going to argue with the try going to Danny as he'll take me apart limb by limb. But that try doesn't happen without that unbelievable wraparound pass as he's getting waffled from Pinkelman. Yeah, that uh, Ben manipulated that situation pretty well. Um, I mean, I don't think too many people get that pass off the way he did. So, I mean, like kudos to him as well as Danny. Any truth to the rumors that you were not talking to Danny? <laughs> I always mess with him after stuff passing. like that where he runs over a couple of people and scores one, and I'm kind of just following him along the way the whole way, trying to figure out if he wants to give me an easy one or not. But usually he uh, tends to just run over the last person and scored himself. So, <laughs> And the added little... The dive. Yeah, yeah. The well, the effects, as as uh, Carl Tanano was saying on the World Rugby stream. Uh, yeah, me and Danny are roommates when we go on tour, so I kind of gave him a little jab when we got back to the hotel, telling him that he couldn't get me another one before the weekend got over. Was that an attempt to be like Todd Clever's diving try over the medic and the injured player down in K? I think, it was- I think his... Uh, I don't know. The, the first two bumps were just so good. I think he just kind of got a little sense of energy there. You don't see Danny put on too many spectacular dives like that, but we'll take it when we can get one out of him. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you a very tough question. Yeah. Major League Rugby, the MLR, if they call you up tomorrow and offer you $80,000 to play, <laughs> are you going to play for them uh, and forego a shot at Olympic gold? Uh, no, no, I don't think that would happen. Uh, 120k <laughs> now, we're now we're pushing it. Um, I mean, obviously, with us, the it's it can be tough at times financially, but I oh, mean, there's something about the Olympic dream, something that I've been chasing since. Well, I mean, I've been with the team since 2013, I was on the outside looking in on the last Olympics, so to have the ability to go to another one, I don't think I would pass that up for uh, that much money. I mean, there's obviously a number. Everyone's got a number, but... (laughs) $150,000. As it goes higher, it makes the decision harder and harder. Um, I don't don't. Hold on. Let me me sweeten the pot here. $150,000 to play for Rugby United New York in New York City, and sharing a two-bedroom apartment with just one other person. Starting in the fall of 2020, I'm in. Hold that, hold that thought for me for a year and a half or two years. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Steve. The offer and, the, and what's behind curtain number one comes in July. So I don't know. I don't know if I'd be able to. That would be a very tough question to ask or answer to give you. Ah, oh, man. I would sit down and think about it, that's for sure, but I don't think I would take it. Well, we just went from no to I don't think I would take it, so we're getting closer. 70 was the start. That was the I don't know. 150, now you have me thinking a little bit more. (laughs) Fair enough. Fair enough. We can dream, right? Hold that thought. We have to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig & Whistle, on West 36th Street. I've been blind since I was four, and I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste, and my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has the taste and the flavor. What do you think is on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. Okay, I want you to answer the following questions in the third person. Oh, uh, this will be interesting, okay. Does Steve Thomason follow the NFL? And if so, what's his favorite team? Uh, Steven Thomason does follow the NFL pretty closely, and his favorite team is the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, that is tragic. I know. It pains, it pains almost everyone to hear it. but yeah, That is the worst team that you could root for. Sorry. Giants fan. 
I could, I mean, I could talk about you guys, but you guys have booted us out of the out of the NFC East. Steve, this is still within the third person segment. Okay, Steven, sorry for that. Yeah. All right, Steve Thompson's interests interests away from rugby are. Uh, Stephen Thompson spends time uh, with his friends, family, girlfriend, and I'm actually an avid video game player. Is it Stephen Thomasin or Stephen Stephen Thomasine? It's 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 Stephen Thomasine's name is Stephen Thomasine. Is that way to is that a good way to put it? Circle gets the square. Does Stephen Thomasine like shopping? Stephen Thomasine does like shopping. What does Stephen Thomasine shop for? That's interesting. Uh, Stephen Thomasine shops for, sh- I'm a sh- I like shoes, or excuse me, Stephen Thomasine likes shoes. He also likes electronics uh, based around kind of everything that's new and hip, uh, watches, computers, video games. Uh, Stephen Thomasine probably spends the most money on food of anything. Uh, but when I do, when Stephen Thomasine does shop, it's usually for shoes clothes or electronics that's that's usually stay within those frames you know so it sounds like that 150k from rooney is going to be pretty much needed even thomason some thomasy well i probably what half of it goes towards rent and then maybe a few hundred dollars for some clo- some clothes in there <laughs> perfect uh does steven thomasine sing and or dance so yes, yeah, Stephen Thomasine sings, but definitely does not dance. Um, within the comforts of Stephen Thomasine's home, he'll dance, and in the locker room before games, he dances. But he'll sing about it. I, or Stephen Thomasine sings everywhere. I, it doesn't matter who's around; he sings everywhere. What does Stephen Thomasine sing out in public? Uh, Stephen Thomasine sings anything country. Anything country music, Stephen Thomasine sings. Um, anything kind of in the John Mayer, uh, Leon Bridges, Stephen Thomasine sings. Um, Can Stephen Thomasine give us a sample of what Stephen Thomasine is singing is like? <laughs> uh, Stephen Thomasine needs a song a request from the audience. Wake Me Up Before You Go Go by Wham. <laughs> Wake me up before you go, go. <laughs> okay, you just a line for there. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And I think you've incriminated you. I think Stephen Thomasine has incriminated himself enough with that <laughs> addition. Uh, that's all right. He's, uh, he's got worse stuff out there, I'm sure. All right. You've handled the third person segment uh, with a palm, my friend. So let's continue and let you go. Stephen Thomasine's excited to move on to the next part. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. Five years from now, where do you see yourself? I see myself hopefully with an Olympic medal. I want to be finished with my schooling by then. Um, I'm, I'm in online classes, so it's taken me quite a bit um, while we play to, to graduate. So I want to be graduated from college. And I guess that would be kind of in the, the re- the realm of time where we would either be getting ready for Olympic qualification season for sevens, or I would be getting ready for um, kind of the last calendar year before the world cup, which would be um, another kind of goal of mine that I have. So kind of in that, I want to obviously be playing still just kind of depends on where and uh, for who. You've come back from a pretty significant injury you're now healthy. You're humming along. What has been your favorite moment with the Sevens team? Ooh, good question. Um, I would say probably favorite moment would be playing in the World Cup in San Francisco this this past summer. Um, I'm from that up in that area, so that was the first time most of my family has been able to see me play live. Um, we had about 60 people uh, from my family there, so that was – Probably, I'd say the the highlight of, of my career was getting to play in front of all my families in a baseball stadium that I grew up watching baseball in. Um, that was up there at the top of the environment in San Francisco was absolutely incredible. Yeah, I, that was definitely the best kind of moment of my rugby career. Yeah, that was a tremendous event to be at and to witness. I can't, I can't even imagine what it was like to play in that event. 
Yeah, they were the World Rugby and, and, and everyone involved did a great job setting it up, putting it on. Um, they made all the athletes' lives really easy. And that stadium is, is iconic in the baseball world. And then to kind of get it into the rugby world and how many people showed up for the whole weekend. And, and we, I mean, we felt it on the field. Um, and I'm sure everyone felt it in the stands because I mean, it was absolutely incredible environment. Are the Giants your baseball team? They're not. They're not. To be honest, I I grew up a Yankees fan, but here's why. Oh, you're a Mets fan too, I'm sure. Oh God, we have we we are so. We, it's a good thing this isn't a dating website because we are so incompatible right now. Yeah, pretty. The uh, yeah, so I grew up a, a a Yankees fan, but I grew up a Yankees fan because of Derek Jeter. So that's my favorite my favorite athlete of of all time. Um, and I grew up kind of idolizing him and trying to. Follow, trying to be a professional in the same way he was. Um, ever since he retired, I've kind of followed baseball as a whole. I don't really – if the Yankees lose, I'm not too, as frustrated or sad as I was before. I just like to see awesome baseball, which we have seen the past couple of years. i got to stop you there because aside from picking the Dallas Cowboys for, to a New York Giants fan and then picking the Yankees to a New York Mets fan, Derek Jeter – has the same birthday as I do, so every year I'm reminded of what a loser I am. Uh, see, I did my research. I'm hitting, I'm hitting all the weak spots for you. I am going to take you down brick by brick. Yeah. So what kind of name is Thomasine? What's the origin? What is it? What's your ancestry? It's Italian. So my, my uh, great-grandpa on my dad's side, he came over from Italy um, and resided in uh, Weed, California, north of Reading. And then, um, so my fam, my dad's side of the family was started up in Reading, and then um, slowly, a couple of generations later, he met my dad, met my mom, and voila, voila. I would have guessed French. No, uh, my my dad's side on the other is is a little bit of French, but mostly Italian from actually both sides of my family. All right, in the locker room, who's the guy that's the most inspirational before you go you go out on the pitch? That's Madison. Um, He's, I mean, he's the one giving the pregame speeches. He, he, especially on this past tour, um, he, he challenges us and kind of jabs at us, not in a mean way or in a taunting way, but kind of to challenge us to play up to a level that we're capable of. Um, whenever he talks, it's, it's quiet. And, and whenever he brings us together and delivers his final speech, it's, it's always on point. Um, Danny obviously has a voice in that locker room too. Um, of a big voice in that locker room, and and he and he leads by example physically. Um, and then I th I would say probably the other one with a big voice in the locker room is Falau, and it comes from his experience. And I mean we're pretty comfortable with each other as a group. Um, so when he does talk, and it's not all the time, but when he does talk, it's um, I mean he's the most experienced guy on our team. Um, and he's played in just about every game you could think of. So when he talks and he has something to say, especially when it becomes inspirational, it's it's everyone's listening very keenly. That's cool because he has been playing lights out. I mean, you, you want to talk about a guy that's that's been the glue, right? And I love the fact that he's wearing the red, white, and blue scrub cap. Yeah, you got to keep that fro in 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 check. It's pretty it's pretty out there now. You guys are rocking it, and I'm I'm up early or wherever you wherever you are. I'm watching, screaming, usually waking up everybody in the next apartment. But it's just a tremendous, tremendous role, and I hope you can keep it up. But but people don't understand exactly the challenges that you guys have in terms of where you are and who you're above. It's just insane. Yeah, I mean, we've worked really hard um, to get here in the off season. We kind of came into this preseason talking about going top four, talking about having next summer off. We, I mean, we have to continue to play well, stay healthy, and um, the rest of the season will play out. But we've got eight more tournaments to hold our spot. And um, I think it's, for us, it's no longer kind of going top four. It's trying to stay at the top of the table. On that note, we are out of time. But I want to thank Mr. Steve Thomasine for coming on. Thank you, Steven. Thank you very much for having me. All right, pretty, pretty cool. Steve Thomas seen of the top of the table, the top of the HSBC World Series Sevens table, Eagles of Team USA, not bad. On that note, Matt McCarthy for Rugby Wrap-Up and our entire staff wishing you a happy holiday and a healthy new year. We'll see you in 2019.